Morning, everyone. Canada's foreign minister joined the queue of world politicians making the trek to Svetlana Tikhonovskaya's home in exile. Most observers believe she won Belarus's August election. She's looking for legitimacy and Canada is keen to give it to her. But I must say they have an amazing leader who has inspired not only the Belarus people but I would say women around the world and, and, uh, and leaders around the world. Notwithstanding the fact that Canada is separated by ocean uh, from Belarus, it is uh, the most uh, aware country that is uh, supporting us. They are so active, they are so vocal and they are so uh, strict you know, in their position. Events in Belarus may be at a tipping point. After 10 weeks of unrelenting street protests, Tikhonovskaya has given President Alexander Lukashenko an ultimatum. Resign by October 25th or face a general strike that will shut down the economy. The backing of workers in state-owned factories is critical, but hasn't been a sure thing for the opposition. Like Tikhonovskaya, Sergei Dilevsky was driven out of Belarus. He still heads up the strike committee at his plant and believes his workers will answer the call. Since the last two months, the government has committed even more atrocities, and this has provoked anger among those working in factories, he told us. Lukashenko's responses have been erratic. First, he met with opponents he'd thrown in jail, hinting that maybe he was ready to talk. But then he greenlighted police to use lethal force on protesters. Canada has sanctioned Alexander Lukashenko and more than 30 members of his government and suggested that other help for the opposition could be coming. Russia, which backs Lukashenko, has referred to such measures as Western meddling. Chris Brown, CBC News, Moscow.